Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my Edwardian chemise. <laughs> Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Um, I followed the McCall's pattern, the Angela Clayton one, if you have seen it. Um, I will link it below so that I can make this Edwardian chemise. And um, in this video, I'm kind of gonna just go step by step what the instructions tell you to do, give you a better uh, visual idea of how to do it. I'm gonna try not to be super repetitive because there's um, a couple steps that they do that is like insanely repetitive. Um, if you would like to hear my opinion on this uh, this pattern and this chemise, um, please stay tuned to the end of the video. I will talk about it then. But otherwise, here is the tutorial. And if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to my channel, like, give it a thumbs up, comment, do all the things. Giving it a thumbs up and like are the same thing. I do this every time. Uh, yeah, so do the thing. So this is the pattern we're gonna be using today. I'm gonna to be making this chemise here. Um, in another video, you'll see me make the corset, which are these items here. So we won't really talk about those right now, but it says um, that on the back, you need nine yards of three quarter of an inch lace, which will be this lovely lace right here. And I got this on Etsy. And then um, four and a quarter yards of ribbon. I don't know if this will count, but I have this really pretty velvety ribbon that I'd like to use. This, I do not have a link for. So there's those. This is just, these are just on the same card. We're not actually gonna use this pink one. Um, and then this is actually the, uh, the cotton lawn that I bought. And it's so pretty, it's, it's pre-washed. I washed it already, but it's so pretty. Like I love this little eyelet detail. I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick it up or not. So that's what we're gonna be working with. And this was on Etsy too, so I will link this as well. So after cutting the pattern pieces and fabric, the instructions have you start right off the bat with adding trim to the bodice front. And I mean, adding trim and details are like my favorite thing, so I'm pretty happy to start here. Step one has you pin the lace on the markings and sew it down along the long edges of the trim. Step two has you slash between the trim stitching and I actually opted out of this because I like how the trim looks on the fabric. So I skipped down to step five, which has you add trim to the sides of the panel. Step six and seven have you fold the seam allowance in and press and then stitch the seam close to the first stitch line. This is the step that is repeated a dozen or so times and I didn't demonstrate it here but I will actually demonstrate it once I add my pin tuck panels. So I'll jump into the pin tuck process and then we can see how this trim is fully finished as it's added to another panel which was a little difficult for me at first. So let's talk about the pin tucking for a second. This is my first time ever doing this and I have to say I hated it at first. When I followed the markings on the pattern, I felt like they were way too close together and that there was no way I could sew this and make it look good. So instead of folding every 3 eighths of an inch, I decided to go up to every one half of an inch. And then I would stitch an eighth of an inch away from the fold. This kind of made it very, easy for me to reproduce and so I did it this way um, and this was just easier for me to do. I also opted out of using pins um, so basically I just pressed every seam and then I would take it over to the, my sewing machine and sew it. This made the process um, a little bit like running back and forth between my iron and my sewing machine um, but I don't care. I really liked doing it this way and then once one um, pin tuck was done, I would press all of them away from me uh, towards the center, I guess, of the garment. Now that my pin tucks were complete, I had to cut out the three pattern piece so I could attach it to my center piece. And this is where I'll explain how to sew and press the fabric to clean up the seam behind all of the lace. 
So I started by pinning my lace with the lace width into the fabric, so about three quarters of an inch into the fabric panel. And I stitched that down about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the lace onto the cotton. So that's gonna be for this image that you see here, the right side of the lace is gonna be stitched down an eighth of an inch away from the lace finishing. So I'll basically have this extra um, piece of cotton um, overlapping in the back. Now I'm going to press that back piece away from the lace and then fold it under and press it in place so that the raw edge is essentially rolled into the fabric and not visible at all. I will then take this to my sewing machine and sew it down with the lace side facing up and I try to basically sew as close to that first stitch that we put down as possible. Step 12 and 13 have you sew gathers into the top and bottom of the front and back panels and step 14 has you French seam those panels together. I will put a video in the cards on how to do a French seam if that seam is new to you. Now it's time to move on to the upper bands. For my ribbon on this costume, I use this velvet ribbon I had in my stash. I start by laying it down and cutting it the length of the band guide in the middle of the, the piece. Then I will cut the lace to the length of the top and the bottom of the band guide piece and I will overlap the, the lace onto the ribbon and pin it down to be sewn. To sew the band on, I repeated the previous lace attachment process, but I did gather the front and back pieces to match up the dots on the pattern before I did this, and then I pinned it, and now you can see me doing the fold over and sewing the folded over piece down over all the pin tucks and lace and everything. For the arm binding, I basically acted as if I were making bias tape and then pinned one side down to the armhole, stitched it by machine, then I pressed it down and inside the sleeve and hand stitched it down to the inside of the arm part of the bodice. To make the strap, I followed the strap guide pattern piece and I just cut the lace pieces out and then I overlapped them about a quarter of an inch and I stitched them down. For the waistband, I once again followed the pattern piece that was the waistband guide and I trimmed my lace. Then I added pins where the dots were since marking my lace was a bit tricky. I lined the pins up with the markings on the bodice that were in place for the gathers, gathered the pieces down to fit in the markings, and then pinned the entire length of the waistband lace down, again keeping in mind that I will have to roll the cotton inside to create the clean edge once the lace is attached. I am not super fond of the front at all. I feel like the pin tucking just looks so overworked and is adding so much bulk and it, I don't know, I'm just not really liking it. Uh, and then on the dress form, it doesn't really fit well, but I put it on my body and it seems to fit okay. Um, I love this detailing and I like the sleeves. I'm not sure how I feel about the binding there though. <sighs> and then, it, like the waistband is the lace as well, as you can see. So, um, yeah, it just feels like it has to gather way too much in the front. So like to have all of this detail just kind of crushed, be, like from the binding or from the uh, gathering is kind of, I don't know, obnoxious to me, so. All right, I'm gonna move on to the skirt portions and then get this attached and hopefully finished. Step 36 has you apply the lace trim. This is exactly like every other time we have applied the lace trim. Are you guys keeping track of how many times we've done this step? I've already lost count, but I know it's been a lot. Step 37 has you sew the pin tucks on the skirt panels. I batch stitched my pin tuck pieces with the bodice piece, so I've already completed this step and we move on to step 
38 through 40. Um, as you sew these panels down to the front, you're gonna do it exactly like we've done the lace technique each and every time. Um, so once those panels have been attached, we can um, gather the top of this piece and um, between the markings on the pattern piece. And then we're just gonna French seam the front half to the back half. I'm gonna set that piece aside for now and then French seam piece tw pieces, uh, piece 12 together and then piece 13 together. I French seam both sides of 12 and for 13, I do not close the ruffle until the narrow hem and gather stitches have been sewn. With all of these pieces together now, I will narrow rolled hem onto the bottom of the ruffle, which is piece 13. I do have a video on this hem that I will link in the cards, but it's pretty simple to do if you've never done one before. I start by sewing a quarter of an inch from my hem, then I take that to my iron and press my fabric up with my stitch line as my fold line, then I fold it over one more time and press it. I don't even sew this with pins since the pressing creates such a crisp line for me. I don't really need pins to do it. Now I can French seam the ruffle closed and it's time to gather down the ruffle to line up with piece 12. And I do this by pulling my gather thread um, just like I would gather any other type of thing. Um, I do like to gather my fabric down by hand when it's only like this small amount. I just think that it's a lot more evenly distributed this way. So this is how I do it. The instructions have you sew the ruffle down with the wrong side of the ruffle to the right side of piece 12, and then trim the extra down, pin the ribbon over that. I actually love this step. I think it's a really pretty and creative way to create a clean seam with the ruffle. Um, when I stitched my ribbon down, I chose to stitch down the left side of the ribbon first so that I could get the ruffle, piece 12, and the ribbon all connected together. And then I went back and stitched the right side of the ribbon. The next two steps are just about as predictable as an episode of House. You guessed it, we're gonna attach the lower band piece 12 to the skirt pieces using the lace trick. We have done this about 50 times now, so the next step from here is going to be attaching the skirt to the bodice, once again, the same way we've attached every other piece with the lace. The last steps after this are just to roll the, the left hem in, the left, yeah, the left side in, and sew some hooks and eyes. I only did two because I know I'm gonna be wearing this under a corset, so doing more than that isn't really necessary to me. Um, but now let's uh, go to some worn footage and uh, talk about my final thoughts. <sighs> Breathe, deep breath, deep breath. I have a lot of feelings about this pattern. Um, I'll, I'll just start with the first thing is this is not like my opinions and what I think about this pattern does not reflect the person that developed the original palette pattern. So this does not my, reflect my opinion of Angela Clayton. I love her. I completely understand the process of developing a pattern, sending it off to a company who is then supposed to mass produce that pattern. This is kind of a dig at McCall's though. I love McCall's patterns, I really do. Um, I'm not like pattern favorite for any company. When you make it and you follow their directions and you gather where you're supposed to gather, like the front part, the bodice, this is my biggest issue with it, the bodice front part. It tells you to gather up here and down here. Up, you know, it tells you to gather these pieces, right? And when you gather it down, it squishes this beautiful detail design that you worked really hard on to um, stitch out. And when you look at Angela's, and you look at this, and you even look at the back of the, pa the, the, the pattern, like that part is slightly gathered, but it's not like gathered down that much. So what I think they should do is have three separate gathers and three separate markings so that you know like, okay, I'm not gonna evenly distribute this whole piece. I'm going, cause that's what I did. I gathered it down evenly uh, versus like, very little in the middle and a lot on the ends. They should have three separate gathers and it should have dots where it needs to line up because I 
really hate how this looks. I hate the bodice. And now something I did realize, and I just kind of just pushed through, when I made my pin tucks, I, whew, this is a biggie, this is a doozy. I accidentally, on the bodice, had them going one way, and on the skirt, had them going another, and I didn't realize it until I put the two pieces together. And I was like, I'm not, no, not, mm, no, done. Like, I was like, I'm so done with this. Um, so that is like problematic and that, that happened. I also um, did not like using binding under the arm. <clears throat> I thought that was very strange and it created a weird bulk at the top. And I thought that if you just like um, use pinking shears to cut that and like folded it in, it would look a lot better. Um, or if you overlocked it or whatever. Um, and I also thought it was too long. Like for mine, it hit maybe a couple inches above my ankle. Uh, and this is the problem I had with um, Angela Clayton's, uh, one of her, her walking skirt pattern. Um, I, it was so long and that's, again, that's not Angela's fault. She made it to her body. It's McCall's job as the pattern maker to say, okay, she's 5'10". What's, what's like average height of, of women or, you know, people, um, that would be purchasing this and make it for that. Cause like in, in all patterns, it has a lengthen and shorten. But if you have somebody who's really tall or somebody who's really short making your patterns and you as the pattern, like developer person aren't going in and, um, making those adjustments so that like it's supposed to, to fit, you know, whatever, like five, four or five, three or five, five. I don't know the average height. Um, but you know what I mean? So I, I just have a lot of issues with that. And I just like, it just disappoints me because I know that Angela's work is way better. And by watching her movie or movies, watching her videos, I know that she's very good at describing what she's doing and talking about it. And she's very good at doing it in a very nonchalant way. And I don't know, I don't feel like her, the patterns that McCall's has developed is reflective of her style of teaching. I kind of like wish McCall's would pay her to um, make videos on using the patterns. I think that would be a brilliant thing to do. And I don't know, I just feel like it would be so much more helpful. Overall, I love my chemise. I think the chemise I made is super cute. I love the colors. I can't wait to wear it with a corset. Like I said, um, I didn't say this ever. Why did I say like I said? I am making the corset for next week's video and I'm just really excited to kind of um, see the two pieces together. Those are my feelings on it. Uh, would I suggest this pattern to people? Probably not. Actually, no, that's a lie. I would totally suggest this pattern to people if they're willing to make several adjustments to it. Um, the adjustments I would totally make is the gathering thing, like I said before. Um, I actually don't know that I would necessarily pin tuck it. I don't think that, that was necessary. Um, and then I think I would also kind of rethink the way that the, the lace goes on. Um, I just thought that that was so redundant um, of like folding back the, the piece or cutting it, folding it back, like ironing it. I don't know. I felt like that was redundant and then it didn't necessarily like at, from here, I can't tell anyone that sees me in this, well, no one's going to see this garment. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of my opinion on it. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this pattern and this project um, in the comments below in this video. I hope that this doesn't sound too negative. I'm just really trying to give my honest opinion because when I posted on Instagram today about it, a lot of people like messaged me asking uh, what I thought of it and like if it's worth our money and stuff like that. And I don't wanna lie on the internet. <laughs> That's like a big thing. I don't like lying at all in general, um, but I definitely don't wanna lie to you guys and tell you this is a great pattern. Everyone should get it when I'm like, mm. but we still have the corset to make. So like, if you really think of it this way, you could buy it for one item, two items, or the other item. And like, it might be worth it for that. But let's, uh, we will see how that goes. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you would like to support my channel, you can go over to Patreon and pledge whatever amount that you can, or you could subscribe. 
comment, share. Yes. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy sewing.